The Wild West, a time period that's been covered many times on this channel. A time of killers and cowboys, of tall tales and a few true ones. And today's subject is a man who has plenty of stories to tell. Whether they're true or not is for you to decide. Bill Longley William Preston Longley, better known by his nickname Wild Bill Longley, had a very normal start to his life. He was born in October of 1851 to a large farming family in Texas. There, he picked up several skills, such as shooting, and earned a good education considering the time. Fast forwarding a bit to the end of the Civil War and the start of the Reconstruction Era in the United States, and Bill is now 16, and he hates the government, as many people grow to do. But he hates it because during construction in the United States, the military acted as police, and were much stricter than the old sheriffs and deputies. Now, Bill was a teenager, so he started to do all the things that the teenager does. You know, experiment a little bit, party a little here, drink a little there, and just run around some people you shouldn't be with. And he also dropped out of school. And in 1868, just one year later, he would start his new life of crime by killing a man. In December of 1868, three former slaves were traveling to southern Texas to visit friends. And they crossed paths with Bill and a couple of his friends, who decided to mess with the former slaves by forcing them at gunpoint to a dry creek bed. Now what they intended to do with these three former slaves is unknown, but one of them tried to run away, and Bill chased him down, shooting him multiple times and killing him. During the chase, the other two men were able to escape, and in early tellings of these events, Bill would state that he didn't kill the man, it was his friends, and he just took the blame for it. But later in his life, Bill claimed almost proudly that he had killed the man. And while this seemed at first like a robbery or some cruel form of fun gone wrong, after the shooting, Bill was like, well, I guess I'm just evil now, and he started to wander all over Texas and would team up with his brother-in-law to go on a crime spree. They would rob a bunch of people, start gambling, and then kill two more people. And for these crimes, in 1870, a $1,000 bounty would be put on Bill's head, which would be roughly $23,000 in today's money per the inflation calculator. After a shootout with some bounty hunting outlaws that ended with the death of Bill's brother-in-law, he decided to leave Texas and head north, where he joined a gold hunting party in Wyoming. But that didn't last long as they started mining on prohibited land in the Dakotas and got busted by the U.S. Cavalry. And Longley, having nothing better to do, just joined them, thinking that the military could help him fix his life. But just two weeks later, he was arrested for desertion and sentenced to several months of hard labor, literally being strapped to a ball and chain before being forced back into the cavalry to finish his five-year contract. While in the army, Bill obviously hated it, but due to his proficiency in marksmanship, he was sent out on several hunting teams quite regularly. And let me ask you this, what do you think will happen if you give a man who does not want to work with you a gun and a horse, and then let him loose with three or five other people to go hunt? If you couldn't guess, he deserted again in 1872. And he decided it would be better to go back to Texas where there is a bounty on his head than stay in the army. Once he returned to Texas, he almost immediately killed another man, and was arrested but bailed out by his uncle, under a condition. You see, the son of Longley's uncle, which would be Bill's cousin, was killed, and Bill's uncle believed it was his childhood friend that did it. So, in exchange for bailing him out, Bill's uncle wanted him to kill one of his oldest friends. And three years later, after trying to figure out if he could get out of this in some way, or if uh, he could, you know, console with himself to actually do this, he would do it. And he would take one of his brothers and flee north, where his brother would be captured and charged for the killing, and another bounty would be put on Bill's head. Longley, now a traitor to his friends, being responsible for the death of a brother-in-law and the capture of a brother, now had a very large bounty on his head. And so he would bounce around from place to place, using fake names to avoid being caught, and would never stay anywhere too long. In the latter half of that same year, he would kill another man in a fist fight. And in 1876, to try to get some money, Bill tried to kill another outlaw to claim the bounty. He killed him, but when he tried to cash in the bounty, he was recognized by the police and went back on the run without the money. After his failed attempt at bounty hunting, Bill would travel to East Texas and start sharecropping, and things were finally going good for him until he started a rivalry with his landlord's nephew over a girl. Bill and the nephew would fight, and the landlord would have Bill arrested and imprisoned. Longley, a few months later, would break out, fueled by anger, and would return to his landlord's home and shoot him in the head. This would be the last confirmed kill by Bill. And I haven't really mentioned it throughout the video, but there's a bunch of other suspected killings that Bill did. But Bill had a really bad problem of lying. 
So he would go on these drunken rants about people that he had killed and these fantastical stories of uh, him killing somebody or him hunting down a bounty. But we can't confirm that any of it's true because either there is no evidence of that person existing, period, or the events that he said didn't really happen. So there's a bunch that I'm not going to go into. After that, Bill would stay in Texas just long enough to bail one of his buddies out of jail. He would then flee to Louisiana. Just two years later, in 1978, Longley was hunted down and captured in DeSoto Parish, Louisiana, and brought back to Texas, where the bounties on him would be cash, and he would be held until October 11th of that same year, where his life would finally come to an end as he would be hung. And so ends the story of Wild Bill Longley. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of false stories about Bill, because he, there's a lot of stuff that he didn't do that he either claims credit for or just outright claims that he did, and there's no evidence for that whatsoever, and Bill was a really bad liar. And a leading theory for this is because he wanted to be this John Wesley Harding type killer, but he never really did. And uh, it's really funny because during that time that he was being held after he was captured for the final time, he bragged and bragged about all these people that he killed, and then was furious when he got sentenced to death when John Wesley Harding was only sentenced to prison. Uh, it's just a funny bit of karma there, but I didn't really mention any of the stories that either cannot be confirmed or stories that are likely lies uh, for obvious reasons. And I'll put the final kill count on stream, but this is the confirmed kills. There's probably a few more that are true, but just nobody can believe them. But these are the confirmed kills, but he claimed to have up to like 20 or something kills. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to the commenter who suggested this video. And if you have a suggestion that you want to see me do in a later video, put it in the comments. And if I choose it, I'll shout you out in that video. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.